Hi everyone, so I'd like to uh, do a short tutorial for you uh, on the uh, use of the oxygen flux equation. Um, it's good exam fodder for both the primary and uh, final examinations. Um, and so we'll first look at the question that might be posed to the candidate. So if you're ever asked in your um, exam exactly you know, how uh, can the delivery of oxygen to the tissues be optimised by the anaesthetist, a really good way of structuring your answer is to use the oxygen flux equation to describe each component and how you can alter that using either physiological or pharmacological methods. So in its simplest form, the um, oxygen flux equation talks about the delivery of oxygen to the tissues. Um, so that's a global uh, kind of delivery and not doesn't take into account regional differences in the tissues. And it looks at two things. It looks at the cardiac output and it looks at the oxygen content of the blood. Now the oxygen content of the blood is made up of oxygen that's bound and the oxygen that is dissolved. The cardiac output is uh, your standard heart rate times by stroke volume. So if we look a bit more closely at the O2 bound, so this is oxygen that's bound to your haemoglobin in the blood. And therefore, if we break it down to its component parts, we need to look at the haemoglobin concentration. We need to know the saturations, i.e. how many what the percentage of the haemoglobin that's fully saturated and then we have a number called uh, Huffner's constant which is a theoretical uh, value of how much oxygen uh, can be um, carried in the per mill of blood. So moving on to uh, oxygen dissolved and now that is essentially uh, looking at Henry's law so the partial pressure of oxygen and it's times by 0.023 and that essentially is um, the amount in mils per kilopascal per 100 mils of blood uh, but it's slightly outside of this tutorial so now we've kind of gone through the equation I'd like now to kind of go back through it again and um, show you exactly how the anaesthetist can uh, alter various components in order to optimize that delivery of oxygen so if we look at cardiac output that's your heart rate times stroke volume and then we're also going to look at your oxygen content so your haemoglobin times by your saturations times by Huffner's constant added to that is going to be our dissolved oxygen which is going to be our 0.023 times by our PO2. So with all our previous uh, respiratory physiology we know that our PO2 can be calculated using the alveolar gas equation which is outside of today's tutorial. So we're just going to write over the top here the cardiac output and the O2 content so we can keep ourselves on track. So what uh, can the anaesthetist do? So I can alter the cardiac output and how can I do that? So I can alter it by changing either the heart rate <coughs> or the stroke volume and I can use to do that I can use inotropes or chronotropic drugs, uh, intravenous fluids, I can alter the heart rate with uh, drugs such as beta blockers and I can uh, also use uh, cardiac output monitoring to help guide uh, those treatments. In terms of the O2 content, how can I alter that? Well, I can alter the haemoglobin concentration, so I can optimise it, whether that's preoperatively or intraoperatively, um, to ensure that we optimise oxygen carriage as best we can. Um, techniques to prevent blood loss, so hypotensive anaesthesia um, or a careful surgical technique uh, and use of cell salvage to um, recycle those lost red cells uh, and we can affect the PO2 which alters the uh, dissolved component of the blood um, 
it's uh, we can inspect that by increasing our fraction of inspired oxygen uh, or altering our PEEP and PEEP again is essentially pressure above atmospheric pressure and uh, we can control our CO2 levels which is the essential <coughs> essentially the counterbalance um, to oxygen uh, partial pressure so thanks for um, listening I'm hopefully you found that useful um, and especially if it comes up in any of your um, examinations and good luck in the future